Now to our regular scheduled meeting for October. Uh, today is Monday, October 13th. And once again, thank you guys all for coming out. Um, Ms. Akers, you want to call the uh, attendance? Uh, Mr. Dawson? Here. Mr. Habermill? Here. Mr. Harding? Here. Mrs. Ennis? Here. Mr. Rice? Here. We've got some students we want to recognize tonight. They've been recognized for doing something good at the school this past month. And we're going to say your name, your grade, your teacher name, which one you grow up. Okay, there's a camera right there, kind of up that way. Here you go. What's that? Tato. Your teacher? Mrs. Faulkner. What grade are you in? Kindergarten. Okay, what name do you grow up? Um, a fireman. Okay, that's a perfect. Julie. Kindergarten. Mrs. Lawson. A teacher. Pia. Mrs. Garcia. Second grade. No bet. Third. Macarena. Air Force. Carmel. Sackett. Mrs. Howell. Thank you. 
Okay, we'll move on to item number four. Can you guys hear us okay? Is the mic projecting? You guys hear us okay? Um, we'll move on to item number four, which I would like to recommend a resolution to appoint city acres. Um, as Secretary Pro Temp tonight, our treasurer, who uh, usually does the job, is on vacation this evening. Second. Um, Mr. Haberhoff? Yes. Mr. Harding? Yes. Mr. Vinnis? Yes. Mr. Rice? Yes. Mr. Dawson? Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you make sure the syndicates get the notes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we will move on to item number five, which is the student liaison update with Mr. Haberhoff. Okay, tonight we've got a group uh, from the high school, it's uh, it's our link crew, and their advisor is Mrs. Kara Habermel, and they are brought some of their crew in tonight to tell us a little bit about what they do. Um, is that Mike? I don't need this. Uh, don't need that. junior and senior students and they're kind of here to talk about what the program is and then I'll kind of talk when they're done. Okay so Link Crew we started it not last year but the year before so we've had it going for two years and uh, I think just about half of us or maybe all of us were in it for both years and it was such a change for us. It was so amazing to be able to sit and help eighth graders walk through because we were the first school that came into that the first eighth grade group that came into the high school and it was just so scary so we know what it felt like so link crew is really we take a day of orientation for the eighth graders and we bond with them and we teach them things to help get them through the school year and then we walk them around and show them what the school's made of and we show them that we don't fight pretty much <laughs> so and then Brittany is going to talk to you about experiences. Okay, so basically what Tay said, we're the first ones coming into the high school, so it was really awesome that we got to share our experiences with the eighth graders and kind of show them like it's okay. We came in first too, we didn't know what was going on, but now we're here to kind of guide you through the high school and to make it easier for you. And we at first brought them in, there was music going on, we were all dancing, we made like a little tunnel that they all got to run through to kind of show like they were part of this high school. And which was great because we didn't really, like, after I was coming in, we didn't feel like we were part of this high school. It was kind of like scary. We didn't know what to do. So it was a good experience to be involved with. And we all had a group. We partnered up. We went to rooms. We played icebreakers, icebreaker games with them. We got to like meet them, talk with them, kind of show them around, like Tay said, and just introduce them into the high school and show them that it's okay. Be yourself. Be who you want to be. Join in groups. Join in clubs and just have fun and experience high school because. Uh, 
I didn't think it was going to go by so quickly, but being a senior, it's flying by. So we just want to kind of tell them that take your time, don't rush through high school, and have an amazing time, I guess. Um, like they've said, being a part of this is really, really uh, important to us, especially because we didn't have this experience. And so we, being able to share that with them is really incredible. Uh, because high school, especially coming into high school, is a scary thing, especially as an eighth grader. Um, so uh, it's really awesome. One of the things that I really love about it is to be able to walk down the hall and see the kids in your Lincoln like, group and say, hey, Chad, how are you today? Or, you know, say hi to them and be able to talk to them. And they have that connection. And then, um, you know, they feel more welcome in that way that they have somebody older that they feel like they can talk to and say hi to. Um, and feel welcome. And Jared and I were partners this year. We had a great time uh, being with the kids. And uh, one of the stories I love to hear happened last year uh, with another one of our link crew members. Uh, after the orientation, we had a meeting and we just kind of sat down and said, All right, this is our first year for this. How did it go? And one of the kids in our link crew said, uh, One of my kids told me that he didn't have any friends. And I looked at him and I said, Well, I'm your friend. And after that, you know, they were able to develop that bond and make that person feel really welcome. Um, like Morgan said about the, the where where they where we first come into the school and we're not like we, when we came in the school we were like the first one. So when we came in, we were like we were picked on so bad. Like it's not even fun. Like we the things that they have said to us, you don't even want to know what they said to us. But now <laughs> now that but like when we did this to the eighth graders this year, I think that they had a way better experience than we did. And it's just just over one day of us bonding with them. And I think that we really made a difference in their in their high school experience. Hi, I'm Sarah. One thing, <laughs> one thing I really liked about the crew was like coming together and getting to know all the eighth graders and just making that friendship. Like you got to meet meet them and learn common interests and activities that you're in. And then also another great aspect I think about the crew is it's not only benefiting the eighth graders, but it also benefits us. It makes more leadership opportunities for seniors and juniors and creates better. Yeah, to kind of go off of that, it's when you're growing up, you can't really see yourself changing very much, but even after one day of orientation for the eighth graders, we could see them breaking out of their shell and talking more and telling us their interests, and it's really good for us to see that we really do make a difference, and it's really easy to see that. Um, I think the most amazing part of Link Crew was on the orientation day, seeing the growth through the eighth graders. They were all like coming in all shy, their eyes are wide, like they were going to be hit by a car or something. <laughs> and I'm going to do in headlights. <laughs> and then like by the end of the thing, when you got to know them and everything was done, they were all like rowdy and happy and just really wanted to be there and it's just, just a good thing to see and a good experience. Um, so this is the second year that we've had Link Crew. And let me explain after you've heard all of this what it is a little bit more. Um, Link Crew is a program that is a transition program. And originally, when we first did it at Vermillion High School, it was for ninth graders. But we had to adapt it to make it fit Vermillion High School. Um, so eons ago, um, Elaine, Matt Mueller, Tim Lamb, and myself drove through a nor'easter to New Jersey to get trained in Link Crew. It's a three-day program. It's very expensive. It's almost $3,000 per trainer to get trained. Um, and it's, an, it's a very intensive training. I mean, it's um, a very long three days, but it is the um, probably m most wonderful professional development training I've ever done um, in my 20 years. It really prepared us to bring this program back, and every um, little piece of it was planned, and you could fit it to your high school. What we do is we started with the application process. We put, uh, last year, the, the peer leadership group put together a video for me about what uh, Link Crew was from the first year. I had done it the year before for that. And um, talked about, are you a leader? What are, the, what are the possibilities? There are actually 38 Link Crew members, but because of the widest uh, assortment of variety of activities they're in, we, we can only get a couple of them, and that's one of the pieces that's really hard about Link Crew when it's done is that they're from all different walks of life of Vermillion High School, and it's really hard because they're super involved. So it makes it really hard to get them all here and get them in one place, even for a lunch and for a follow-up meeting. So that is, that is one part that we have not truly mastered yet. Um, so we did a process 
um, the, both years that we've done this, we've had about eight, uh, 80 applications taken, um, about 70 turned back in. This year's group was a little smaller because the eighth grade class only had 153 um, eighth graders in the class. So we actually have 37 link crew leaders right now. And they um, did a May development day. And in the pictures that we had, um, my seniors from last year actually ran the May Development Day. We walked over to the board, the um, board of Education office, and we did a training of the activities. And from there, um, the the new Link crew members were like, "Wow, this was really exciting." And then in the fall, uh, interrupting their summer break at eight o'clock in the morning, they gave up their time to come in to be trained for two days. And what I'm doing is I'm training them. Um, and the activities that they're actually going to do with the eighth graders on orientation day. They have the eighth graders in the classrooms by themselves for approximately um, an hour and a half to an hour, to four, an hour and 45 minutes. So I am putting them through two days of training the activities. What do you say? How do you handle this? Um, it's full of energy up and moving around. And it takes the eighth graders who, like they said, were very nervous, very didn't know what to do. It takes them from a level of activities where they are complete strangers and very uncomfortable to the point where at the end they're sharing their experiences and what they're looking forward to in high school. These guys are all very involved. They want to make sure that their legacy of what they've done at Vermillion High School continues. And to me, that's the most important part is that, you know, they're talking about how their heart, it's hard for them to believe that they're seniors. And they still keep referring to last year's seniors and the things that they did. And all of the things that they did with those eighth graders during orientation, and you can't see because of the picture, the, the slides didn't work out. But one of the last things they do is they give the eighth graders a tour of the building. And to me, it was kind of comical because of the adjusted uh, start of the school year, our tour, the staff was actually in the building. Because normally, um, the teaching staff's not in the high school. So these guys got to come up with a theme for the tour. <coughs> and they put on costumes and did a tour with the eighth graders to show them the ins and outs of the building. Because to an eighth grader, there's two things they want to know. They want to know what their schedule is and where their locker is. And after that, everything is good. So we really you know, gave them a tour, where are the lunch lines, which restrooms to use, all of the ins and outs of the high school. These guys did it. I just helped them realize the things that they need to share with the eighth graders. And so it went from you know, their tour, they come back into the gym, um, they did, we did a closing activity, and I brought forward all the seniors and talked about their commitment to graduate with their class and brought the juniors forward and showed the eighth graders that they have an impression on the high school. And to me, it's absolutely amazing to see how much all of the seniors and the new juniors, this is new to them, how much they really um, look at the eighth graders and go, wow, we were eighth graders. Because this senior class was the first class we brought in as an eighth grade. So they've got the full five-year effect of Vermillion High School and what it was like to come in. And they didn't have this program. And I think that's part of the piece that they're very passionate about is that that wasn't there for them. And they want to make sure that it continues. So you know, we did the orientation. Um, the school resource officer set up a luncheon for the eighth graders after that. So all of our eighth graders got a great experience to Vermillion High School. It was a positive. It was a fun day, and I can speak from personal experience. I have an eighth grader right now, and it's hard to impress her and wow her. And she wasn't excited, and she said, well, I have to go. And I'm like, yes, you have to go. And she came back and she goes, that was awesome. I really liked it. So I think we're doing the right thing. We're making a good start for them. We're, we're providing them with a memorable experience of high school. And it's interesting because a lot of the sophomores go, can we join? When can we be in my crew? Because they want to follow this tradition. So. Um, right now, I'm the only one that is trained um, for Link Crew. Mrs. Reynolds with Peer Leadership helps me and works with me and does everything that I, I ask her to do. Um, we would love to get more staff trained, but again, it's expensive. Um, there's another piece of it that's a follow-up that is another training um, <clears throat> to keep the program going to do more things. Um, in the past, we've done some follow-up activities working with the Peer Leadership. Um, Last year, we went in and we did some follow-up lessons and tag. So it's a growing program of, of different things that we have going. So I want to thank all of you guys for coming to talk about it because it's a pretty neat experience. So. Great. Thank you, guys. Um, you know, I think being the first eighth graders to come through the high school, you guys know more better than anybody. So you're kind of trailblazers, right? So 
you know, it's easy to laugh about it now, Jeremy, but you know, you guys were probably pretty intimidated back then. So um, thank you for making eighth graders feel welcome and, and kind of breaking down barriers for them. I think it is a really big deal. Thank you. That we will move on to item number six, which is our legislative update with Mr. Arden. I'm going to touch on two things tonight. Um, one is House Bill 597, which is the repeal bill for the Common Core Standard state standards. Unfortunately, that hasn't moved in a couple months and is on hold, so I'm hoping they soon they decide what they're going to do with that. Nothing has been done recently, and of course everybody's out there campaigning to keep the job so, or get a job, so that's what's going on at the, at, at the uh, state level. At the federal level, there is a uh, short-term funding bill for school districts around the country. Unfortunately, it's not enough to make a difference in, in a lot of the local schools, but it is a Band-Aid. Uh, it's temporary, and it's uh, it's been passed uh, both the House and the Senate. It will begin the fiscal year 2015 uh, on October 1st, and uh, again, it's just, it's just a short-term Band-Aid to help with the finances financial situations in, in the uh, states that are, are having problems. And a lot, of, a lot of the states, the state governments, for whatever reason, have reduced state funding for their schools. Uh, the state of Ohio has reduced school funding up to the tune of about $6 million. And the uh, federal government cannot pass, possibly make that up, but they're doing the best they can, and, and hopefully uh, things will get changed in the future. Anything else? With that, we move on to uh, item number seven, which is public participation. Anybody that wishes to speak? Mr. Smith? Oh, okay. Thank you, Mr. Dawson. Um, I was on the committee that uh, did the study and uh, decided to go ahead and uh, remodel two of the buildings and build the new elementary building. At that time, and it was a couple years ago, I had asked the board if they would consider naming the new building after someone. And I said at the time that I thought perhaps it would be appropriate uh, for an Ohio hero, and since, uh, oh, they all left, uh, the little kids uh, will be in that building and certainly would uh, be interested in, in the, uh, yeah, uh, stuff. space, space program. And I had suggested at one time, and I don't know if you remember or not, but I think it would be appropriate to name it after um, um, yes. first man on the moon, Neil Armstrong. Neil Armstrong. So uh, I certainly would like to nominate that hero uh, to have that building named for him. There may be many others. In fact, I was thinking about the uh, historical people from uh, Erie County. However, they're even older than I am, so uh, I don't think that some of our uh, naval heroes from uh, the Battle of Putin Bay, which I was told in college, and I always talk this way too, I hope you remember, that uh, the probably the most important battle in our history was the Battle of Putin Bay. But Mr. Perry is even older than I am, so I don't believe that uh, that 
might be appropriate, but certainly our young people. And uh, my grandmother was so proud of the fact that she remembered the first flight in an airplane, and she lived to see the first man on the moon. And uh, certainly, Neil Armstrong uh, would be appropriate to honor many places in this state. We are honoring today an Italian uh, who, given credit at least for discovering the new world, but uh, Mr. Armstrong uh, invented <laughs> uh, a whole new frontier. And I certainly would uh, think that uh, the board would consider that uh, instead of just having it be in the middle of Bethel Street. <clears throat> yeah, I think we made a decision last summer right now to go with Vermillion Elementary School. But I think we're always open to recommendations that we have to have the committee together, maybe look at honoring somebody from the state of Ohio. I think it's definitely something that we would look into. Our presidents that came from Ohio, I used to tell you kids uh, that uh, perhaps we have seven, I believe, um, presidents from Ohio, and uh, the country would probably like to give them all seven of them back to Ohio. But uh, anyway, uh, Mr. Armstrong uh, will live in Italy. If I can borrow uh, famous quote from the Second World War. Thank you. Thanks. Anybody else who wants to speak tonight? Thank you, Mr. Smith. <clears throat> with that, we will move on to item number eight, which is reports, and we will start out with our superintendent's report. Okay, as we all know, there's a large variety of work that's going on in the schools. I'm going to start with the elementary school, our building that still is waiting to be complete here in January and a substantial completion date that is still scheduled for December 3rd. So we're still looking at those dates as a, a substantial completion and the move-in date. Uh, they're working on painting in the gym and the classroom areas. We actually, uh, this last Friday, took our elementary school teachers through the building and gave them a tour. They were asking for a vis vis uh, visualization Sorry of what the building looked like and gave them the opportunity to see what it what it was going to shape up to be and they all went over got inside their classroom areas or what they think their classroom areas are going to be and uh, wrote with pencil on the walls and uh, decided where they're going to name their classrooms there and they kind of stake their own ground there so that, that was a good thing for them uh, there's grouting that's taking place in the quarry tile in the kitchen, so they've got the tile work laid. They're installing exterior doors. They're installing the gym equipment. Uh, their basketball hoops are up in the, in the gymnasium now, and uh, they're getting ready to install the, uh, there's a net that will be going down as a gym divider, so that's going to be installed. Ceiling lights uh, and all the devices on the walls are going up, the grading of the site uh, preparation for asphalt is taking place. They did want to get that asphalt work done in the last last week, but unfortunately we're set back just a little bit by some of the grading, and I'm hoping that that will get done within the next couple days here this week. Uh, the water line on Douglas Street, as you know, has been closed down. Or Douglas Street has been closed down, and that was due to some water line work that's taking place, so we're hoping that that gets buttoned up here quickly and alleviate some of the traffic problems as we know we have around the campus. Uh, any questions on the progress of the elementary school? I'll go one at a time, one building at a time. Yes, or both. Okay. I guess it's straight to the point where we on schedule. So far, yes. They're, they're still saying that we're not substantially behind and we're still okay at this point. If you, the teachers, when they walked inside and you see the amount of work that still needs to be done, course they're concerned but now that things are under roof the grid work has started on the ceiling the paint started it's looking more like a building every day so I, the finished work will get done quickly 
these yeah, things all the day they, the, the day before the teachers went through I stopped by and I Tim walked me through and it's uh there's a lot of work to do but it's it's come I mean there's a ton of people working in there and it's uh you know the layout looks great on paper it looks better in person it's it's really hats off to the architects I think they did a great job laying the place out and you know without being too too big it's it's well it's space that's well dispersed I mean everybody's going to have their own space and it's 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 really impressive yeah that's a good point uh, Mr. Habermill when the teachers walk through one of the concerns that we had when we were building this building is looking at the square foot of the present elementary school that they were in as we all know that that was a high school sure. and that was 90,000 square foot this building is in the 62,000 square foot range and so there was a big concern of downsizing so to speak in their minds of buildings but when they walked into the building that was one of the first comments that they made was that their space really looks very comparable to where they are now I've heard that too. and they're they very happy about yeah the, the space and just the way it's laid out yeah, so. nowhere in there do you get the impression that they're going to be crowded mm -hmm. by any stretch I mean, right. it's, it's really nice i guess my question would be so right now we're on uh, time but do we have a plan okay we're going to get the building on the third here's plan a plan b if we get the building on the 15th and plan c if we get the building on the christmas eve do we have plans in place for the emergency move and if it gets to that point to be ready to go by the 5th. The 19th is a Friday, right before the Christmas break? Correct. Right now we have scheduled for the teachers, those elementary school teachers, to have that day as a move-in date and the day after Christmas. You mentioned a plan A and B. Plan C was even later than like on that Friday. No, there's we, we absolutely have to have them done by that time because we need those two days minimum as a move-in. What we're anticipating though is from the 3rd till the 19th that there's going to be a good amount of teachers that are going to be going in there after school and doing a lot of the movement and setting up their classrooms and we'll, our crews will help them get their things moved over there. We really have to push not to have a plan C. We'll have one behind the scenes, but we're sure not going to let the architect or the builder just know that there's a plan C. It's really just an A and a B only. So hopefully they're not watching this tonight. There's a plan C. So. I just want to make sure we, we do have those A, B, and C, so there's not, at the last minute, we're scrambling trying to find okay, No, we'll, we'll have something ready. We, we, we will definitely have things lined up, but we're, we've got to really push for not to have it that C take place because it just shouldn't be an option. Right. Right, next question would be on the, you mentioned they're doing the tile in the cafeteria. I, I hope it's not the same tile that we've got in this building Saturday because I, I, I do not care for it at all. It looks terrible, honestly. Uh, it, it's, I got to tell you that it is a quarry tile mm -hmm. and that's what the, that's usually a standard product in all kitchens. I don't know why, we, we still haven't determined why they can't get this quarry tile cleaned up in both of the kitchens. That's on their list and that's something that I was going to touch on in both the, in the middle school and the high school. So whatever they did there, they better not be doing here because it hasn't cleaned up right. But one thing that's different about this job is that they don't have people walking all over it right after they laid it. Unfortunately, because of the nature of that project, that's what happened in that, in that rehab project. This floor is not being walked on as much and it's being left alone and it will be sealed properly, I'm hoping. I, and we don't even know if that's the, the problem. They're claiming that that is some of the problem was the seal possibly. So. That's part of our punch list. So I've never heard of, of tile being sealed. I, I know grout being sealed, but not tile. It, and, and that's and maybe I'm mixing the terms, but it looks dirty. James, you never, you, never I'm going to defer to you. He's out there to yeah, the, the grounds. The operations was sealed. You're right, Dave. And the manufacturer of that tile is actually coming out this week to assess the issues with that tile. So it's the same tile that's going into the new school, the exact same. It's the same. It's very similar. But it looks terrible. 
if, if it's any consolation, I saw it and it looks good. <laughs> it was, uh, I mean, they had it, they had it installed, looked like they had coated it and uh, the whole kitchen area was sealed up with plastic so there wasn't dust getting inside or anything like that. In most high quality kitchens, that's usually the product that they use is that chloride tile because it's durable. It's really hard and durable. We have an installation issue. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's what we're dealing with basically is what to do about that. Okay, moving ahead on the some of the other things. As far as looking ahead of what's going on in that middle school, they're starting the cubby area tile work. Uh, they're completing the gym and equipment install. Uh, they're starting the site lighting. They're continuing site grading. They're starting asphalt in the east parking area, and they've completed the drives and walks. So sorry, I didn't know that he did a, a Tim gives me an updated sheet here, and I'm just kind of going off the sheet here and what I know as well. As far as the high school and the middle school goes, uh, they're completing the commissioning of the HVAC system, and we're completing the punch list and close out of both schools. One thing that I know we have a real big issue with, as far as we're concerned, is the heating system and air conditioning system at the middle school. The idea was when we installed those systems is that we were going to have a, a good balance in the way that that air is blowing, both hot and cold. That's not working out well. We've got complaints from the staff that it's either too hot or too cold in some of the rooms. That's no different than what we had originally. So the intention was to put those new systems in and get it right. It's nowhere near right now, and therefore we're still not going to sign off on this punch list. Did they come out and look at that? And they are working on it. They're still, James, when, when's the next scheduled time that they're out? They actually were out all day today working on the problem and doing some assessments. It seems like we have some mechanical issues at the middle school unrelated to the control package that was put in over the summer. And they're getting us some quotes on that, but it should be all taken care of here shortly. They did some things to make those two units run temporarily while they order it to products. <clears throat> so we didn't look right up there with the tile. This is our most frustrating issue because it's just not right, period. And, it, and that school was miserable before, and it, I think it's just as miserable now. Well, it, it's frustrating to sit up here and hear that we've got issues that were pre existing before we dump money into it. It takes me back to the plumbing issue. We spent a ton of money on redoing the plumbing and the drainage around the lower floor. Come to find out there were other issues existing before we put the money into it. Yeah. So the, the pre-engineering and designing of this whole job leaves a lot to be desired. We're throwing good money after bad. And it's, yeah, I don't think it's, it's not. It's disappointing. It's neither one was it. Says. And like <clears throat> the plumbing issue I think we have under control now. It, it's, tied in and figured out at it this point. Tied there was an unexpected issue that there was not proper tie-ins underneath the floor of that building and that wasn't something that an architect could ever know and plan for. So unfortunately, and I'm not trying to take anybody off the hook here, but I'm just trying to put the blame where the blame lies. At this point, what I think we really have to go after is the Gunther Mechanical, is the, are, are those the ones Gunlock. that are doing Gunlock is the heating and air conditioning people, and then the tile people are a main one, so those are the two that we really have to pursue. And then you've got a mil, not a million, um, over-exaggerated, but you've really got a lot of other small items on the punch list that we're not going to sign off on until we know that it's been done and done right. And there is a fine. It's not as substantial as it was when we did the main sign off for the whole building, but it's significant. And I got to tell you, I said so at this point before, it drives me crazy to know that we left this building, nobody's in there working. As I sit right here, I see tiles that are upside down. Right there? Actually, those are not. Those, those are upside they, down. They did flip those back the right way, and those are unwaxed. That's the problem with those now. So they did come in here and they did repair those. They flipped them back the right way. Now we got to put a wax on those tiles. 
the wax makes that big of a color difference. Yeah, um, it, it, that, it's hard to believe, but it really does. Well, so, regardless, that's not acceptable. Right. That's the, well, it, well that's, that was part of the problem. Right there is a living, breathing, not, not breathing, but it's a living example <laughs> of a problem that we had. And they, they at first put the tiles in upside down. It looked just like that. And if you look at it close, though, they did now flip them back up the right way. Well, you really can't tell, but there's a right and a wrong way to put those tiles. So here's a question for you. You know, with HVC, sometimes we don't always spec it right, and then we get exactly what we get and what we, we, we ask for. And so my, my concern is, is, is the issue not the HVC companies, is it the issue that we spec incorrectly? And now we've no. got stuff that's overperforming in certain areas where it just... It's a good question. And the answer is that everything was spec right with the exception of one unit at the high school. So it's not a question of having the right units in the right places at the middle school. That's not the case at all. There was one unit that an engineer did make a mistake, that the contractors did eat the money for the mistake. And there was a wrong size unit that was put in at the high school over the uh, locker room area. So we had a five ton unit that needed to be a 20 ton unit. That's significant. And it's not going to heat or cool properly. So that has been changed out. The contractor made up the difference in the cost. And so that's, that was on them. And we well, stuck to I don't know. Out. Sometimes we're thinking if we're specking it, that's the problem. We spec this stuff out, you know, X amount per unit here. But what happened with that was that the engineer misread the prints, and yeah. they, it was on the engineer to read the prints properly, and it wasn't caught until the unit was actually installed up on the roof, and they had this dinky little unit where the okay. main one was supposed to go. So. so, so at this point, just to help make me feel a little better. What are we doing? Who are we bringing in that is independent of both parties that can really identify, you know, the heating and air conditioning issues? I mean, with that. Tim's the guy that's, uh, but he's not an expert in this stuff. He's, you know, we actually have a commissioning agent that we've hired, Palmer, and they're coming out this week to do another assessment as well. Okay. So we'll have a report from them, and they'll be directing Dunlop on what to do to make the repairs. But we did hire a commissioning agent for the HVAC. I mean. So when I bought my heating and air conditioning, I got all the wrong stuff. <laughs> I didn't know any better. So when I bought, had to replace everything that was only two years old, I brought in an independent person before I signed off on anything. Does everything look right? Right. So And that's I what mean, this commissioning agent does. Yes. They came in before the job actually started. Yeah, they, they were working they with They did them. some of the spec yeah. work and looked at what the proper sizes needed to be, and now they're back again to look at it again and make sure that everything was done right. Yeah. So this We're will get expert, done, yeah. but it's frustrating because the teachers are in that building and suffering as they did before, unfortunately, and the staff. So it's not a good, good situation. We've got well, good. Just, so we got something. Yes. Yeah. So what are we going to hear back on that? Uh, they're supposed to be on, I believe, um, either Wednesday or Thursday morning. So we'll know, you know, they should have a report to us within 24 hours. So by the end of the week, we should have a report from the commission. I'll update you all yeah. and either send your an email them. or put it in the week in review, and I'll keep you up to date on that. So once again, summarizing, the punch list is, is long. We haven't signed off on the punch list. A lot to do. The two main things that we've got are flooring and air conditioning, and then a lot of small things that we'll keep after. Did the staff get a copy of the punch list so they can see within their own area anything to add to yeah, that? That's a good point. What, what we have had them do, we didn't give them our list, but we're telling them, you tell us if there's anything that you notice that we can add to the list. So the staff has been told that they need to add Tell us anything that you see, no matter what it is, whether it's new, old, or, or whatever. And who are they reporting that up to? They're reporting that to the principal. Okay. And then the principal gives it to James. Oh, so uh, hopefully they're putting it right via email versus just verbal? Right. All right. Right. 
So moving on uh, to phase three of the high school, they're, they put a trailer over at the middle school and they're getting ready to mobilize on the site for the field house. We should be breaking ground. We're actually this Wednesday going to have a groundbreaking ceremony with the coaches at 2.30. So I called Candy today, let her know that if she can come over and take some photographs of that, we'd like to get the shovel in the ground and uh, break ground for that. And they will be on site here uh, with the first coordination meeting is actually this Wednesday as well too. So we're getting going on that and you're going to start to see activity taking place on the site. <clears throat> That's got an estimated completion of the June? No, that got pushed till August. So that will be complete in August now since we had a little bit of a, a setback with the How time. How is that going to affect moving? Because you've got to move the weight room before you can start doing the music wing. We're going to do, we're going to temporarily move that weight room to another location during that yeah, time. You can move upstairs yeah. into the wrestling room. That's purely picking up. <laughs> yeah. It won't be, it won't be fun. Yeah, it'll be cool. Well heated and well air conditioned. Yeah, so we're going to have just, to. Did that date just change in like the last week? Is it we said here? Last, time, last meeting it was going to be done at the end of May. So yeah. Well, it, it can't be now because, well, actually, I thought it was June, wasn't it? it was June or July? Whenever school was out. Whenever school was out. Yeah. Whenever, so like was out. Yeah. whenever school was out. I thought yeah. because we had to go back to the table and look at some of these changes and look at the budget again, that pushed the timeline to where it is. Right. That means to me, based on track record, in September. Well, we're dealing with a with a different contractor this time, so I think we should be. We're going to do everything we can to make sure that it's done on time and pushed up. Hopefully, that's not the case. It can't be September. We need to have that open. So, that pretty much catches you up to date on the facilities update. Any more questions? You know, I'll tell you, um, Herc using our property to store all their stuff, I think we need to look at just getting them out of there now because there's no sense of urgency of getting these roads done. So I'm irritated with it personally and uh, I think we've enabled them to just sit back and take their time with these roads. So, do they have uh, uh, do they have anything any more equipment on the parking lot right now, James? That you know of that's hurt stuff? It's, it's, it's over in our it's over our tree lawn. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know the scary part right now is, you know, God forbid we had something happen in high school trying to get emergency services or EMS. You can't get down Douglas. You can't get in the north driveway. You come to the wrong part of the day. You may not be able to get down, stay the way drive. Okay, it's it does, it's the worst. You know, it's. Yeah, as a temporary situation, we've had to ask our SRO officer to stay on the property in the case of an emergency until that apron is opened up. He just sent me a notice today from the, the engineers saying that they were hoping to get that apron opened up today, but the barriers didn't come off. So I'm hoping by tomorrow that that concrete should be cured enough that that apron could open back up because I can see where someone's coming. actually driven on it when it's wet. Yeah, that's that's a shame. Yeah. Yeah, there's tire marks right across the front there. Hopefully that's not gonna be too bad, but it looks bad. It doesn't look good, that's for sure. Okay, any more questions on facilities? Okay transportation changes and the new elementary school. I believe that this was talked about at a prior meeting, but we want to talk about it once again tonight, and then we will put it out there on the website and all of our social media sites. We want to make it completely known many times that we're not going to change transportation that's presently in place for any students. So we're going to keep the buses that are running, running in the areas that they are, 
and then we're going to reroute the buses for that, that will be needed for the elementary school. So if you're presently getting a bus, no matter where you are, for the remainder of this year, you'll continue to get a bus. And we'll pick up the new routes that are necessary to get them to the elementary school. So I think there was some doubts or questions, and some of you have taken questions from some of the community members about what's going to happen. How is that in the real world where it's a mile, two miles? Right, the radius is one mile around the perimeter of the school. So where is the line now for where the old elementary, the old elementary school is right now? Where's that line in Valley View? It's a one mile Cindy, do you, you know the it's exact right location. It's right at Devon Drive in uh, where Langford comes around and meets Devon. So we're going to bus people for right block, there. two blocks? Yes. If they, there's a lot. Yeah, it, it, if they if they want it, we'll run the bus by there for now. We just we felt that mid, mid year, I guess. Gotcha. Yeah, that there could potentially be kids that live over in that Decatur Street area that will be busing now. We right. didn't have it before. Right. So what is this? Have we looked at? Are we adding buses? Do we have to have drivers? It, it's not a tremendous rerouting cost, James. Do you know? Has she calculated yeah. it all out? Yeah, it looks so like we're going to have to add two drivers. Two drivers. Yeah. We have enough buses that are out. So yes. Now is that temporary workers or is that full time? No, temporary, just for that half school year. And then we'll drop the the ones that shouldn't be riding at the beginning of the next school year. Okay, so we'll get that out onto the web and all of our social media sites and we'll put it in as many prominent places as we can and that takes care of that. Okay, um, I'm going to skip number three because that's going to take me just a little bit uh, longer. I just wanted to bring to your attention that uh, the Compass, which was a publication that existed quite a while ago, is back in existence. And so if you could pass those along and let you take a look at the quality of the work that's being done there. Ann Zadinsky, our English teacher at the high school, is the editor of that and the students are contributors and we think it's a great thing to have back at the school and Anne will be doing the yearbook this year as well and so you see some of the quality of things that she's doing there with the kids and I think that we can look to see some real quality things that are going to go into the yearbook as well so just wanted to bring that to your attention. Candy do you know years ago Compass was part of the photo journal? Yes. Any, you talk to? Nobody's talked to us. Okay, so, you, so down the road was, we can. It was like LinkedIn yeah. or? It was, it was yeah. part of the paper, the kids oh, PDF yeah. their oh, own thing. All right. Yeah. We probably didn't know that, that that was the history, so now we do well, and we'll it, get in touch with you. It, it was two pages and then toward the end it got to be one. Well, this is two pages worth at least. It'd be great to tie it back in on some level. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. That could become and part of the Heidi paper. had asked about it oh like two two years ago. Okay. But there was no publication with which to work and now there is. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so we talked about the concrete apron and that was part of my report, so you know about that hopefully opening up by tomorrow. And okay, so you can hold off on that until then. Yeah, sure. okay. All right. Okay, so the last item that I have on the superintendent's report is the purchase of iPads for grades K through five. I'm going to change this a little bit and we're going to for tonight. I'm making a recommendation that these are going to be a K through three purchase, and we're going to change the amount of the iPads from 200 to 150. We have to have more discussion with the fourth and fifth grade teachers. Uh, some things came to light over the weekend when I was making this recommendation. I talked with the principal today. I don't believe we're in a position at this time tonight to go forward with anything additional for the 
fifth grade. We do have two teachers over there at the fifth grade that did want them at this point, but we can make do with this approval tonight with the recommendation if we go forward for the 150. And then we'll have further conversations with the principal and with the teachers of the fourth and fifth grade team. What I want to say about this purchase, and I think you've seen the YouTube video, and I will play it for you tonight if you'd like, but I think you've all seen it, and it pretty much goes through the rationalization of why the iPads are needed at the K3 level. It's part of blended learning approach that we're using. It's part of a centers-based approach. We have right now nine laptops per classroom that have been disseminated throughout each classroom. These iPads then would be added to that center-based approach. So basically what the teacher is doing at times during the school day is running through centers. She'll take a small group of students and then that instruction becomes individualized with either the laptop and software that's being run through the laptop or now with the iPads being added and this would add an additional five iPads per classroom to a center. So that really becomes a total of 15, 14 to 15 devices to be used in that classroom as a center-based approach. We still do have at the K3 level those iPods those are still being used and will continue to be used until their life is, is, is no longer able to be carried on further. But they are, this is going into their sixth year, and they're the size of your phone, basically. And as you know, when you use a device that long, it does start to go bad. So we did sell a lot of those that we recouped to put back into this initiative. So. Do you want to see the video tonight? Is it necessary for me to show you the video? No, but I'd like to know the dollar amounts. You and I talked. Yeah, we need, I mean, Sean, did you recalculate it? Yeah, it would be 76, 192. So what is okay, that for yeah, you? Let me, let me talk to you about well, that a little bit. I know well, that you talked to me uh, about the price. Buy, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was concerned. I Here, here's, here's what we're doing, you know, just uh, to clear up any misconceptions. That's five, if you, if you do the the numbers, it's $507, I think, per unit. But what that does include is Apple Care and a case. Now, the question was brought up, well, you, I can go to Walmart and buy them for a cheaper price. We will approach Walmart, but, and if we can't, and if they will sell them to us with the Apple Care and the case and give us a better price, by all means, we'll do it. But the thing of it is, is they might not sell to us in bulk like that. We don't know. What we did was establish the price through Apple. Most likely, they're going to direct us back to Apple and say that they only sell to, through Apple, or to, Apple can only sell them to us. So we're not sure at this point whether Walmart will sell them to us. We'll try. But that was the best price at this time that we were able to negotiate through Apple. looking for the price. Well, I just want to make sure, I think with all the laptops we have in the district, all the money we've given to Apple, you know, the, the deals we have, to, to me it seems not much of a break. Um, what, what is the, what's the same size? 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16. 16. And it's Apple Care Plus, so it covers drops and, and accidental damage also. Screens. The only concern I have about the 16s is you know, a lot of us have bought the phones with the 16s, and now with the new OSs, as they keep upgrading. Right. Another thing, though, is you know, you, kids aren't going to store pictures like we do. If you look at your phone, they're going to take pictures, and then they're going to import them into some type right. of cloud storage. Um, and then it's up to the teachers to really maintain a, an ad library. Which we, 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 we did the cloud, which is nice. So did, right. We did consult with eSpark, which is a company that curates apps, and we looked at their pricing. Their pricing is really expensive. Our teachers felt they can curate the apps, and that's what the product they recommended is a 16 gigabyte is typical for K3. I guess what we're asking you to do tonight is approve a ballpark number, and we're assuring you that if we can make a deal okay. through Walmart, we'll do it. 
we're, we're going to try to find the very best price we can. And we sure have in the past, and we will go back to Apple before this is finalized. We negotiate hard with them, too. We tell them, look, we'll go somewhere else. We've walked out, uh, out of the table, off the, out of the deals before and said, no, we're not going to do it. So we'll go back to them and try our very best to get the very best price we can. So this this figure, the seventy six one ninety two. That would be the, the, the maximum. Still not to exceed. Not to exceed. <clears throat> I've talked to Suzanne numerous times about hey, do we have the money to pay for this? She said we have not put the money back. <clears throat> Does anyone need to see I, I see shakes have had that you don't need to see the video uh, explaining the we've all, we've all been down this road. My only concern is, you know, 32 gigs are. We can, and that's that's the thing I think we should do is, if we can't approve it tonight, there's speculation that new iPads are coming out in October. We don't necessarily have to cut a PO tomorrow. We yeah. can, you know, look at the new sites, see what's coming out. That's what happened with our last laptops. We had a 64 gigabytes of SSD storage space, four gigs of RAM. The next day, Apple had a keynote and released all new hardware. Yeah. And we were able to go back to them and say, this is what we want. This is how many we have. Right. That's well, you, you guys tell us we put this. On, I think we put this off since July. So you know, we know that the, the K three teachers have been <coughs> chomping at the bit for these, and I know that they've been putting pressure on me, the, the principals, on the teachers union, on everybody because it, it is something that's not a want. It's a it's a need. It's something that's part of their daily instruction now. That's how far we've come. At that elementary level, I think personally, I'm comfortable enough, Sean. As long as you say hey, you can do your due diligence shopping around before you guys write the PO, uh, I know we've put you off long enough. I, I'm okay going forward with the. Don't you put yeah. Right, the K through three. With 150. Yeah, that's what we're going to say. Is this is the this is the, the highest price we will pay? I think we're going to the table and try to. Okay. And we will be going back, as I said, with the four and five teachers and working tomorrow with them. We did talk with the principal today and the principal did meet with both grade levels and we still have some more work and thought to go into what needs to be done with the balance of that situation. So we'll be getting back with you on that. That's all I have then so that the next item would be the recommended resolution. If you have any other questions. Oh, fine. <coughs> but you know again I, I just wish we were going with the slightly more upgraded version and we, memory. As Sean said, if that's if that can be now the next thing because we hit the timing of the I think the iPads at one time was the, the MacBooks. The I, yeah, the MacBooks. Right. We also had something with the iPods that we were able to negotiate a better price because right. of changeover. So we'll work with every option that's possible and do the very best. Hopefully the timing works out that we do get the 32 at the same price, or better price, even better, even a cheaper price. That, that being said, I'd like to recommend the resolution to to approve purchase of 150 iPads with cases from Apple Inc. at a cost not to exceed seventy-six thousand one hundred ninety-two dollars. Second. Further comments, questions. Mr. Haverhill? Yes. Mr. Harding? Yes. Mr. Zinnis? Yes. Mr. Rice? Yes. Mr. Dawson? Yes. We will move on to uh, item 8B, which is the treasurer's report. Uh, Suzanne is out of town tonight. But, uh, She's got some things on the agenda that she felt was uh, time sensitive that we needed to address. Uh, first one is uh, I'd like to recommend a resolution to uh, it's up there. What's that? Yeah, recommend a resolution to accept fiscal year 2015 permanent appropriations as seen in attachment A. Um, she said Ohio law requires adoption of permanent appropriations in October of every year. 
She would like to have this done prior to our special meeting so she can complete the budget and financial documents that will be discussed with the board on our October 27th special meeting. <clears throat> Any further questions, comments? Mr. Dawson? Yes. Mr. Rice? Yes. Mrs. Ennis? Yes. Mr. Hardy? Yes. Mr. Haberman? Yes. Next, I'd like to recommend a resolution to amend the capital asset policy to increase the assets, asset capitalization threshold to $5,000 per auditor recommendation. I'll move. Second. Susan Hens, uh, that uh, the auditors have been reviewing our board since <coughs> August and made a recommendation to amend the capital asset threshold. She asked that this be done to comply with the audit recommendation. Questions, comments? Mr. Haberman? Yes. Mr. Hardy? Yes. Mrs. Ennis? Yes. Mr. Rice? Yes. Mr. Dawson? Yes. Three, I'd like to recommend a resolution to approve the discretionary investment management agreement with Meter Asset Management Inc. as in the attachment B. All of a second. Suzanne is changing investment firms to get a better return on investing district funds. This agreement must be approved by the board before the investment firm can begin managing the account. Uh, she also said that an email was sent to board members regarding the change before she left, but she did not copy. Yeah. Uh, she said that she sent an email out to all of you to approve yeah, that change. Yeah. The only thing we already moved, right? Yeah, we okay. still. The only thing that I would discussion time. that I would ask is, um, and I can drop Suzanne an email too, is just before we get too far removed from our previous investment firm, let's understand what our return was on that, and then going forward, what we get from this company, so that we can really tell if we've made good decisions. Yeah, because the market conditions are changing right now. Mr. Yes. Mr. Hardy? Yes. Mrs. Ennis? Yes. Mr. Rice? Yes. Mr. Dawson? Yes. Item number four, I'd like to recommend a resolution to accept the following donations. $135 from Sid and Sandy Jordan to the Vermont High School Weekend Project. $208 from Richard Zanglin and Lakeland Lodges to the Vermont Elementary School to supplement existing funds for the kindergarten field trip to Burnham Apple Orchards. $150 from Birmingham United Methodist Church to the Vermillion Elementary School to be used to provide emergency lunch money for students. I'll move. I'll second. And as always, we'd like to thank the community for the, for the giving. It's greatly appreciated. Mr. Habermill? Yes. Mr. Harding? Yes. Mrs. Ennis? Yes. Mr. Rice? Yes. Mr. Dawson? Yes. Number five, we recommend a resolution to approve the following fundraisers per policy 5830, as shown in attachment C. The Vermillion Elementary PTO Market Day sales of frozen foods uh, September to May, and the 2015 Prom the Dawn fundraising table at home football games, which included the VHS landscape timber, paper team spirit notes to team players, and 50 50 raffle tickets. Also, the VHS yearbook Lake Erie Fear Fest coupon donation campaign, which is going to run from October 14th through November 1st. The VHS Winter Guard Pumpkin Roll Sale from November 7th through the 21st. And the Sail Away Middle School PTO Christmas Store from December 15th through 19th. I'll move. Second. Cindy, I'd like to thank you for putting together the, the list of the fundraisers. I think it's a great benefit to us all to, to see all this and, and I think we've talked about this numerous times I think our intent is never to we're not trying to discourage people from raising money but we're trying to limit it as much as possible so we're not putting such a burden on our community mm -hmm. yeah. fundraise the same people over and over and over again yeah having them on the list I think puts it into perspective yeah. again how many things are out there 
football games look better this year. Last year, there were times it looked like a flea market. I think it's felt a little better over there. Anything else? Mr. Habermill? Yes. Mr. Hardy? Yes. Susanis? Yes. Mr. Rice? Yes. Mr. Dawson? Yes. Discussion items, item number nine. I've got on here, I've been working for, uh, with Cindy's help here uh, for like the last month or so, working with a firm, Matthew Markling, McGowan of Markling. So a firm that comes in for professional development for us to come in and talk about the do's and don'ts of boardmanship. Um, we've got a couple of dates that they are available to uh, come out and work with us. That's at, at the end of your term here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think so. it's going to fit everybody. They are, uh, if you guys want to check your calendar, October 27th, November 17th, and December 22nd. So, yeah. I think last time we did it was Saturday. We did. It took a couple hours. What were those dates? The October 27th, November 17th. December 27th. I only gave him the dates of the established board meetings, so if you would like to choose another date, we can always. Oh, okay. okay. All those work for me. They're all board meetings. <laughs> all the board meetings. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought you wanted to incorporate that as part of the regular. Yeah, you know, it'd make for a long night, I think. Yeah, it probably would. Yeah, I think it's the Saturday was. Early December and then November. I think November, but it's not I need 8th, 15th. I'm caught in the right there. 22nd. 22nd works. Just before Thanksgiving. It's good. What's the backup date? That's, that, that's kind of a good time because that's in between. I mean, if anything, it's just going to be your, I guess, it's it's a new season for basketball and stuff like that. So it'll only be scrimmages and stuff. The, the seasons are just starting then. So I think that's actually a really good time. Cindy, can you check? Yeah. What time? Yes, for our first option, the 22nd, 9 a.m. 9 o'clock. Um, and then have them give us a couple other options that are board nights. I'll check the calendar right now. The 29th is the Saturday for Thanksgiving. That's not going to work. Yeah, I know. Uh, I think oh, we did this a couple years ago. I think it's well worth it. It was very, yes. Yeah, yeah, no question. There's not an expense to us. I think it's covered no. through our. It's covered by North Point. Right. Okay. You'll follow up. Yeah. Is that the only date you want me to check? Well, have them give us a couple of options then. Okay. Um, Did you want to get it done before the first of the year? Yeah. I'd like to. Okay. Yeah, November 22nd. Okay, first date, but a couple of backup days. Yes. Oh, backup days. Check December 6th just to okay. well, be safe. Um, anything else we want to add in the discussion items? Two, there's nothing on November 22nd for our schedule. Two short. Sorry. <laughs> this new operating system. <laughs> I'm getting it on my iPad and my phone at the same time. So. Um, two things. One thing that as the money Comes available and as the projects move on and we're done with phase three we're believing and hoping and thinking that there's going to be money left at the end of this project and I would like us to be considering and giving strong thought about the fact that we need to upgrade our science lab that lab down there is in sad shape and needs to be thoroughly upgraded. So as money becomes available, 
I, I've given the blueprints to the science department. They're going to get back to us with a, a wish list, a dream list, so to speak, of what they want to have happen within that wing. Quite honestly, too, in addition to that, though, I'm looking at other options of going out for naming rights, including like a section or a wing of that building that we could look for someone that could give a substantial donation to that particular wing of the building and all the other wings the of the building, too. Is and the auditorium. Those are all open for possibility of naming rights, and that's a whole other subject, and we don't need to get into the naming rights tonight. I'll talk about that at a future board meeting as I'm getting closer to the reality of going out with that. But I do want you to all have in the back of your mind that I think that we need to look at the science wing and dedicating money as it's available. I think those are the original lab tables. Yes. They are. Um, yeah, they're in really bad shape. So we need to give that a makeover. And one other thing that I'd like to bring up tonight is that this has always been in the back of my mind as, as a dream of what to do with this campus, this school, this learning system that we're creating and how to market it and how to sell it and how to advertise it. And I really believe that things are starting to come together with the campus and the building of the building of that elementary building is now com coming to a fruition and we're starting to look like a real school district that's on one campus. I think the only way though that we really can get out into present day advertising and selling of ourselves and, and telling of all the good things that we have going on in our schools is to create a TV station, to create a library media broadcast journalist space that is on par with our technology. And I really believe that that's always been in the back of my mind that that's what things would look like here. And I think that it's going to pay for itself. I don't want to say pay for itself. I'll retract those words, but I believe that it's going to pay a good deal of money back to us in terms of advertising and the options that it would give us if we were to invest in that possibility. So, would this be Channel 20? Yes, channel yes, it would be resurrecting that and YouTube. using that as, as, and, and also YouTube. Oh, it's right. oh, we're going to have more space. Yeah, yeah we more and more people going away from the time more and more. That's, like, that's what I talked to the tent floor about last week in the tent land was people want on demand, they want Netflix. Yeah. So. YouTube, use those medias. We've yeah. sent our our new library person out to Amherst and <coughs> to compile a list of things that would be on par with Amherst because they're a model school of what's going on with broadcasting. She's also looking at Westlake. And so I've always had that thought in my mind to want to make that as part of this plan, of overall plan of what we're doing. And it just makes sense to me. So I'd like you to be ready for me to come back to you with a recommendation of what to do with that option. So I guess I'm just prepping you for that possibility. We're listing equipment, we're listing needs, and I'm really thinking that we are, should take some of the money from the sale of the South Street and possibly dedicate those dollars towards that because I think that that's going to be well money spent that will come back to us quickly. I can anticipate that we can get a lot of advertisers coming back to us with some options. I'd also like to know how much of our capital improvement would it actually use in lieu of what's been going on with the other projects. So if we could get a I'll give you a feel. list of that. Yeah, I know we've used some and we've approved those funds, but you know, it seems like we've spent less this year than we have in years past, so just because everything has been pulled apart in the yeah. Yeah. Uh, just, just a small example of something that we invested in over the summer was photography equipment for our art class. And this is along those same lines where it's hands-on for kids. And in addition to that being a, an opportunity for us as a marketing tool, 
and just getting the word out about what our teachers are doing within our, our classrooms is the things that it does for kids. It's just a whole nother realm of kids learning. And now you can see teams of photographers walking around our school using that equipment. It's changing the culture. It's, it's just a different mindset of the way kids are working and doing things. Well, you know, it's really important. Every company on this planet is looking at how they can do exactly what we're trying to do to market ourselves. And, and, and teaching our kids these skill sets is really to prepare them very well for you know, any job in any company, um, just because every company is looking at you know the same type of thing. How do you communicate what you do? Right. There's a lot, all these media's that are out here that's you know available to you. And it's all about doing it the right way. Well, it's critical that we continue to grow and get better. And I really I've said this for the last year. We're we're poised. We're really on the verge of just letting people know how special we are, but you can't really do it right until you have the media to be able to do it too. We've got the laptops and that's big, but just having the TV broadcasting abilities and having the videos out there on our web and, and connecting the, the whole story is important for us. So, um, the, you, I'm sorry. Your newspaper, is it online as well? Oh, oh, no. Right? No? Because we're millions and older demographic. Okay. And we do better than all of our other newspapers that are online. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's just another medium for us to potentially tap into. But, it, it, you know, it, it's it's not like we haven't discussed it. But, sure. You know. that, that kind of goes back to the older demographic of what Channel 20 would catch because Really, YouTube catches the young generation, but Channel 20 mm -hmm. would be our older demographic watching the yeah that that channel. But there's a crossover too that you know more older people are becoming more tech savvy. So. But you know, it's just the fact that you can watch something now, a quick 15 minute or two minutes of what's happening at your school right here. I mean, this is what's all happening. Mm -hmm. Think about how many videos you're actually watching here versus even here. I mean, we're watching a lot on this video. You know, the older media. demographic is not. They're, no, I'm like, they're going to be like to watch. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they're not going to watch these how hard school they're doing. Yeah. Still have to, I think you still have to keep in touch. We could that. see that that could be a, a real big potential yeah. for that older generation. They're getting more and more tech savvy. <laughs> they are. We'll offer, we'll definitely, the idea would be to offer it all. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. Well, we'll see it. I know. Okay. <clears throat> Before we move on to discussion items, I'd like to recognize two things we did this past week. Number one, thank the BTA for sponsoring the candidates night. I personally went really enjoyed it. I thank you guys for going through all the work yeah. to set that up. Very beneficial. I'm sure everybody got a lot out of it there. that came. Second thing was um, Spirit Week, I think, was a big hit. I talked to a lot of people last week, and especially the way we kind of, the, the grand finale was the, the Millennium Ministerial Association with the host football game fifth quarter, which I think was a big hit. And the weather was nice, and the kids got a, lot of, got a lot out of it. So thank you guys and the Ministerial Association for those two events last week. What was the final turnout at this point? There was quite a few people there. It was huge. It, it was a pretty good crowd. It, it didn't look as crowded as when we headed to the gym because obviously you had a bigger area. Yeah. But the kids, I think, enjoyed, the weather was great and the kids yeah. enjoyed yeah. being outside. And uh, so a lot of kids came back just for that. Unfortunately, it seemed like the football game was not as well attended, but they yeah. came back for, for the fifth quarter, so which is fine. Which captured them either way. So I'm super kind of getting out of boxing with a black eye. <laughs> yeah, I got whacked a couple times. But it's worth it. Oh, good for it. Item number 10 is the consent agenda. Uh, Superintendent Treasurer recommending the Board of Education for the consent agenda items. Action by the Board of Education and the adoption of the consent agenda means that all items are adopted by one single motion. Unless a member of the board, the treasurer, or superintendent requests that any such item be removed from the consent agenda and voted on separately. Uh, item A is review October 10, 2013 board minutes as attached to D. A approved minutes of the meetings as follows, which were attachment E, 
from uh, September 8th, September 10th, and September 24th of 2014. See the Special Education Transportation Purchase Service Agreement with Spectrum Early Intervention Center for transportation of special needs students as shown in attachment F. D, approve the following employment action, the letter of res resignations as follow um, from Randall Cole for retirement effective 2016, Eric Johnson, assistant football coach effective September 5th of 14, Jeffrey Olson, grade three co team leader effective October 3rd, 2014, and Susan Winnie as for retirement purposes effective June 1st, 2015. Also terminate the contract with Carly Adams effective September 24, 2014, and direct the treasurer to serve appropriate notifications. Uh, leave of absence to Mickey Fritz for maternity leave November 26, 2014 through March 9, 2015. One year limited classified contracts as listed. Uh, one year additional duty contracts as listed. One year supplemental contracts for the 14 15 contract year to the following pending. Verification of people activity permit as listed. I will move. Second. Um, do we know at least all the winter sport supplementals? All of them, minus some assistant coaches, we're still working on some assistant coaches. I believe basketball, girls' basketball assistant coach is not in there, and a freshman coach is not there. So all the head coaches are here, and of course, if they're not able to fill those positions, we'll have to come to you as soon as we can get them filled. They're working on just a few. The spectrum we brought up last week, we did not find a driver available for that. Uh, that was that actually, we did talk about that, and John Parsons came in and met with us on that and found that it was not uh, James did you sit in on that meeting I did not know okay honestly sorry Mr. Harding I did not sit in on the meeting but I do know that he did meet with us on that and it wasn't a uh, it was something that Cindy did you sit in on that I didn't sit in on the meeting but that is something that uh, school like that typically takes care of that on their own in similar fashion to Murray Ridge School where they provide their own transportation for the students that are attending there. And that's just a typical thing. And the, the bus garage is fully aware of that and the drivers are fully aware of that. And it's a, you know, it's a cost savings because they're already providing transportation in the area for our students. John, John came in and met with uh, Linda, right? Yes. John met and with Linda, talked with the drivers, and they were in agreement that that was the Okay, thank you. I see the list here, we've got some new people. Uh, I know we've tried to make an effort in the past to have them down here. Introduced. Yeah, that's my, my fault for not remembering to have them be introduced. We can have Sorry, them come in the next meeting. Yeah. Are any of them time sensitive? All the coaches, I believe, are, unfortunately. <clears throat> uh, let's see, who would be? We're going to have to go through these. And we really so have bowling them. is completely different this year. George retired. Yeah. I think Scott's been the assistant for a while. I think the wife is like this. Doing well. But hey, they provided a great great teams. Moline is very well known for his domination bowling. <laughs> we okay? You can call the roll. Mr. Haverhill? Yes. Mr. Hardy? Yes. Mrs. Ennis? Yes. Mr. Rice? Yes. Mr. Dawson? Yes. <coughs> On item 12, public participation. Anybody heard anything interesting in the comment? No. Okay. Well, item 13, I would like to recommend a resolution to move into executive session for the purpose of employment and compensation of public employees. Second. Okay. 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 
Mr. Haberman? Yes. Mr. Harding? Yes. <coughs> yes. Yes. Mr. Wright? Yes. Mr. Dawson? Yes. We have 828. Hey, Phil, for the, uh, the, the 